In the morning of the first day of the week, Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. So she went and announced to the other disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she, and she told, me, told them that he had said these things to her. That evening the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again he said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, now I send you. Then Jesus breathed into them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. My sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. celebrating the 8 o'clock Mass, which is a much smaller group than what comes to the 1030 Mass, uh, that um, a, a visitor came to be with us for the very first time. And he sat down over there in the back row where uh, John Dean is sitting. <coughs> so I'll never forget that day uh, because it was the first day that a man by the name of Andrew Bills came to be with us here at St. Matthew's. And of course, I knew he was a visitor uh, because he's kind of hard to miss. <laughs> he, he has a presence that makes an impression. Um, but I also noticed that as he was sitting through the liturgy, um, and it was quite obvious to me that he was not Catholic because he didn't know all the special things that we do. <laughs> Now he's got him down. <laughs> but uh, I remember seeing tears coming from his eyes, and what a tender man he is. I later learned that Andrew Bills uh, was a Baptist minister and later a Pentecostal minister. And, uh, and I thought it was wonderful that he was worshiping with us, a group of Catholics. And I asked him how that was possible, and he says, well, I don't care what kind of church it is, when I feel the Holy Spirit, I feel the Holy Spirit, and I feel the Holy Spirit at, here at St. Matthews. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Well, you know, today is the day of Pentecost, and what better uh, way to celebrate than have a authentic, genuine Pentecostal preacher preach the gospel to us this morning. So I have invited our dear brother, uh, Andrew Bills, to now uh, uh, share with us uh, some of the wisdom that the Holy Spirit has given to us. So let our hearts be open as God speaks to us. And uh, Andy, I now turn it over to you. I bless you, Bishop Peter. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It is indeed with tremendous joy that I stand before you in all humility to share with you the Word of God. And right before I share the word of God, I want to thank each and every one of you that have come out this week. We've had some of the most anointed preaching and teaching that I have ever experienced. And I told the earlier group that if it was even possible, the devil himself could have gotten saved. <laughs> and we've had tremendous singing here. I saw people shouting and dancing in the Holy Ghost. People have been healed this week. I heard private wonderful testimonies. And you know, this is just the beginning 
because God's breaking down barriers. Doesn't matter what nationality, what your religious background, doesn't matter what your race, creed, color, or what language you speak. Either you know the Lord Jesus or you don't. That's what it comes down to. But it's God's will that everyone be saved. But the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Well, in a, just a few moments, I'm going to be sharing with you the word for today. But I've asked this wonderful choir, praise team, that have been so dedicated to sing a very special song. And every time I hear it, I am just overwhelmed with the glory of God. I, I hope you can sense the presence of God as they sing the selection I've asked them to do. Savior Jesus 
rose up, rose up, and he rose that we might live. And today we worship you for birthing this church. Fill us today with your Holy Spirit. Renew in us a clean heart. Have your way mightily in us. Purify us from all evil. And let us learn to walk in your strength and in the power of your Holy Spirit as you desire. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. My cup overflows this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Someone says, well, does it take all of that emotion? Listen, I've seen people at a ball game. <laughs> Do they ever sit quiet? <laughs> they get emotional over their favorite athlete or uh, whatever performance occurred, don't they? Yes. Some of them paint their faces, they act up, the popcorn go flowing through the air, <laughs> the hot dogs over here. You know, Jesus is greater than the Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> and the Angels. And the Clippers. And any other team that's out there. <laughs> Hallelujah. I ask the Holy Spirit to give me a special word. After all this amazing teaching this week, and I have to say, I told the Father Peter last night, I can't top what he did. <laughs> the Holy Ghost used that man. But you know, we have to keep going back to the filling station to be refueled that we might run on a little bit longer. Is that all right? Yeah. In Acts <coughs> chapter 1, Verse 4, the word says, And being assembled together with them, he, that's Jesus, <coughs> commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard of me. Jesus gathered the disciples that final morning somewhere around the Mount of Olives and they had breakfast early that morning Jesus finally leading them turned and looked them straight in the eye and he says I have one more commandment it wasn't a request it wasn't a suggestion but it was his direct, decisive command to them. He says, go to Jerusalem and wait until you be endowed or endued with power from up on high. Now we need to understand the strength of Jesus' command to these disciples because Jerusalem wasn't a place that they were ready to go. Jerusalem represented the place where Jesus was arrested and his blood was shed. Jerusalem represented the place where the enemies of Jesus still were lurking about looking for the disciples. Jerusalem represented in the hearts of all of these disciples, a place of fear. They were intimidated to go because they thought that the same thing that happened to their Lord and Savior might fall on them. Jerusalem was the last place they wanted to be. Now, if the Lord would have said, meet me over here or over there, they would have gladly said, well, let's go. But their minds wasn't thinking about Jerusalem, but God's was. And Jesus said, I want you to go and 
wait there in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. The power that I've told you about. I've told you about the Holy Spirit. I told you that I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send a comforter, one just like me. But as I was with you, he will be in you. Don't you cannot proceed without him. You cannot do what I want you to do unless you experience him. Don't go do anything. Wait until you receive the Holy Spirit. Go to Jerusalem. Now the disciples had questions, but they didn't ask the question that I wanted to ask them had I been there. I said, wait a minute, Lord. How long should I wait? <laughs> that wasn't addressed. I, you know, how many of us, we get in certain circumstances and we start praying, but it's a matter of waiting. None of us like to wait for nothing. You know, we, we like, what is it, uh, that, that fast food place? We want it now, we want it our way. We, we want it when the moment we pray. Lord, I, I'm sick. Heal me now. Lord, I need a financial blessing. Bless me now. Lord, I need this. We want it now. We the now generation. But God wants us to wait. But here's the message of the hour. In their waiting, what Jesus was saying to them is that the help that you need is on the way. Don't look at what you're going through as you're waiting. Help is on the way. And as I got into that, as the Holy Spirit began to speak to me, I began to rise up in the joy because what Jesus is saying, and he's saying to all of us, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, don't look at the weight. Just believe that your help is on the way. We've got to focus on Christ. We've got to yield to the Holy Spirit. We've got to learn to trust Him. We've got to do what He says do. We have to be obedient to Him and know that our help is on the way. Thank you, Jesus. My help is on the way. Last year on Thanksgiving, me and my wife went over to a relative's house. And before I could sit down with that beautiful turkey meal, and oh, it looked so good. I leaned over and told my wife, I said, babe, I said, I feel sick. I'm having chest pains. I don't know what's happening. And she ended up rushing me to the hospital. I experienced such excruciating pain like I never had before. And I was calling on the name of the Lord. I was trusting him. And even though I was in the hospital for almost a week, even though they had me hooked up, to the morphine and they couldn't figure out what was the matter. I knew that my help mm, was on the way because I trust Jesus. Yeah. I trust him. I believe him. And you know what? I'm going to let you know something. The promises of God are still yes and amen. God always shows up and shows out. God delights in coming through, opening up doors that no man can see, opening up doors that no man can close. God delights in breaking in on the scene and working miracles and wonders in our very midst. Our help is on the way as we look to him, as we trust him. Are you looking to Jesus? Are you trusting him? You know, Many of us are not aware that we are broken. We're broken. We're broken, we're fractured, we're cracked. And if you can't admit to that, you're more broken than you realize. And we need a continual infilling of God's spirit in order to deal with some of the circumstances that we're facing. We need to be dependent upon God's Spirit to help us through. I have buried members of my family. I didn't think I was going to make it. I had to draw down on the Spirit of God to help me through. 
And I remembered the Holy Spirit reminded me that the ones I laid in the grave, they're not there. They were with him. And I looked at the clouds and I said, one day I'm going to walk on those clouds. One day I'm not going to feel the pain that I feel because my help coming from the Lord. Amen. You got to learn to trust him. You got to look at him. You got to seek him. You got to draw close to him. You got to get in his word. You've got to believe him. This is what he wants us to do. Our help coming from the Lord. And my, my friends, my sisters and brothers, whether you realize it or not, we in one of the most dangerous days that man have ever lived in. Our government doesn't care. The, our, our help doesn't come out of Washington, D.C. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. Our help doesn't come out of Sacramento. Our help comes from the Lord. We've got to look to him. We've got to trust him. We've got to believe him to strengthen us, to encourage our hearts, to help us, to provide for us, to touch us, to enable us, to empower us to do everything that we need to do. You, when you send your kids to school, you got to trust God because a lot of children are not coming home. Not the way we see it on the news. People are shooting around, but we got to trust God. We've got to learn to trust God the Lord and look to the Holy Spirit when we're driving on these freeways. We've got to learn to trust the Lord when we're walking up and down our streets. And I'm here to tell you that the Holy Spirit of God <coughs> never fails. Never fails. He never lets us down through every circumstance that you can ever encounter or experience. We can depend upon the Lord. That's the message that Jesus said when he told his disciples to go to the place that they didn't want to go. He said, your help is on the way. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that? Hallelujah. How many of you need help? How many of you need strength? How many of you need something from God? Hallelujah. You know, we all do, whether you want to raise your hand or not. We all need something. You know, when I was 20 years old, I could jump straight up out of bed and just run down the street and do anything. I got a little bit older. I, I move a little bit slower. But my help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. He is the healer. He is the strengthener. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, saints, my cup overflows this morning. I love every one of you. I have laid before God. I have prayed this week. We fasted. Yeah, we, Andy builds fast. <laughs> <laughs> when I push my plate back, I'm serious with God. <laughs> my wife knew I love to sweep and calls Junior and all them other places, but they didn't get my money. They went broke this week. <laughs> I prayed that people would be healed. I prayed that people would be filled. I prayed that people would receive breakthrough. I prayed that people would get wisdom from up on high. I prayed that somebody would hear from the Holy Spirit. And as I looked around, I saw that the Holy Spirit of God did not fail us. They did not fail. How many got something from the Lord this week that was here? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There was healings. There was encouragement. There were blessings. And I'm here to tell you, I saw Bishop Peter such an ecumenical move like I've never seen before. And the Holy Spirit is saying, bring all the people together. Black, white, Asian, uh, European. Doesn't matter what color, what race. Oh, I want to tear down denominational doors. I want to break down cultural barriers. And people came in here and loved on one another. My Pentecostal brother that was here last night, Pastor uh, Michael Hodges, uh, said he never heard a man preach like this. <laughs> this is a stark Pentecostal brother. <laughs> working it out. 
He's bringing folk together. Why? Because there's only, how many heavens are there? There's only one. There's only one Lord. There's only one faith. There's only one baptism. There's only one Savior. There's only one Redeemer. It's not a Baptist Savior or a Methodist or a Catholic. There's only one. There's only one Holy Spirit. And he's bringing people together to love one another, to stand together, to be strong together, to lock arms. We've got to, I thank God, you know, the hardest thing for God is getting some people's cooperation. It's easy for God to raise the dead, but it's hard for God to get some people's thinking. God wants to change some people's thinking, but they won't let go. Uh, Dr. McNichols, they won't let go to certain traditions. God wants people to be free. He wants us free so we can embrace one another and help the people that need to be helped. Thank you, Jesus. This is the message of this morning. Our help is on the way. But I'm glad to tell you, he's already come. He's already came. He's here. And he's closer than a brother. Somebody said, well, Pastor Bills, why did somebody refer to the Holy Spirit as she? Let me tell you a little secret here that I've learned. The Holy Spirit will be to you whatever you want him to be. If you need a father, he'll be your father. If you need a mother, he'll be your mother. If you need a brother or sister, he'll be your brother or your sister. If you need a friend, he'll be your best friend. He'll be whatever you need him to be in that hour, that crisis, that circumstance, or that need. But we need to let go of our mentality, our biases, our prejudices, our, our old traditional ways, and just say, yes, Lord, I'm here. Feel me. Have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord richly bless you this morning. Amen. Amen.